Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So welcome to church. Sunday morning. It is good to be able to worship the Lord and praise God and give Him glory and honor, no matter what our circumstance might be. God is good, and He's good all the time. So on today, let us lift our, our hearts in prayer as we seek God's favor upon this worship time. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to Thee as humble as we know how. We come to Thee, O God, with thankful hearts. We come to Thee, O God, with our minds stayed on Thee. Thank You, Lord, for another awesome day that You've allowed us to see. Thank You, God, even right now, for covering us with your glory. Thank you, Lord, for being able to sit or to stand and worship you on this Sunday, on this Lord's Day. Now, Lord, we pray that your power, that the Holy Spirit, will take control of this service and that no man or woman will get any glory but all the glory shall go to you. However, we pray that in this worship service that people will be edified, will be built up, that people will be encouraged, people's faith will be increased. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Would you join me in the Apostles' Creed, a creed that is said in Christendom all over this world? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into Hades. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Good morning, Grace. Right where you are, I want you to just lift your hands and speak well of them. Begin to speak well of him. Hallelujah. We're so grateful to lift his name on this morning. And if you know the song, we want you to sing it with us. All right.
there is peace when I call your name. There is joy when I call your name. There is love when I call your name. Because when I call your name, there's joy, there's peace, there's healing, there's deliverance. God, have your way in this place like never before. Touch your people right where they are. Give them what they need. Speak well of them right where you are. God, we're thankful for life. We thank you for the essentials. Life, health, family. Hallelujah, Jesus. Continue to have your way in our lives. Like never before. Oh, God. We need you like never before. We need you like never before. You are our strength. You're our joy and sorrow. You're our hope for a better tomorrow. Hallelujah, Jesus. Just stay in the mode of worship where you are. Continue to just speak well of him. Give him the fruit of your lips. Give him what he deserves. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's no one like you, God.
In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 25, we read these words. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of desolation of the wicked when it cometh. In Job chapter 3, verse 25 reads, For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. Amen. It would be an understatement for me to say this, but I'll say it anyhow. It is scary out there. It is terrifying for many of us in this world. But I pray that many of you can say like me, although it's scary out there, I am not scared. Although it's frightening out there, I am not afraid. The great contemporary songwriter and preacher Andre Crouch in his memorable song through it all penned these four words in the first line of his composition. He said, I have many fears, not just a few, but I have many fears. I have a myriad of fears. He does not share with us what those fears were. He just tells us that his fears were many. He goes on to say that he has many sorrows and he has questions concerning tomorrow. And then he has the audacity, a preacher, a Pentecostal preacher raised in the word of faith tradition. He had the audacity to say that there are even times that I just don't know right from wrong. Mr. Crouch's situation is not unique for many of us today are experiencing the general, the general dynamic of this song. The writer is saying, in effect, that life can be scary and many situations and developing circumstances are often frightening, especially life's vicissitudes, the changes that we're constantly going through. Life is constantly going, taking us through changes. It seems to many of us that when we finally get acclimated to our life, to our lot, to our purpose, our destiny. Stuff happens and things begin to change. That job we loved has been eliminated due to downsizing. Gentrification is taking over our neighborhoods and we can no longer afford to stay in our houses any longer and are forced to sell. And even that child who was once excited about church and was up before you on Sunday morning. That child who believed in God now has no interest in church and even questions the very existence of God. The vicissitudes of life changes. Even that one whom you were convinced was your soulmate, one who would be with you for the rest of your life left you for another and now you must start all over again the vicissitudes of life changes and now this worldwide virus has brought upon us a type of fear that seemed to be compounding itself each day to the point that we find ourselves crying what shall i do what shall i do what move shall i make what road shall i take oh lord what shall I do? Help me, God. Fears, sorrows, questions about tomorrow. Don't know what right. Don't know what's right and don't know what's wrong. In our text, in the book of Job, this very familiar passage of Scripture, the patriarch Job seems to be in a similar predicament. His world has been turned inside out. In the space of a day, in fact, according to the text, within one hour, he has lost 
all of his collateral wealth and his cherished offspring, all of his sons and daughters. We're given a snapshot of the extent of his wealth in chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, where, he, where we read that he owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 donkeys, and had an enormous number of servants, hundreds of servants. He was the greatest man among all the people of the East. The King James says that he was the greatest man in all of the land of Uz. But now in our text, this great man is virtually destitute, afflicted with ulcers and scabs from his head to his feet. His wife has given up on him and told him unequivocally, curse your God, curse your God, curse your God, and don't just curse him after you've cursed him die. Even his well-meaning friends Bildad, Zophar, and Eliphaz are no comfort to him. Thus at the lowest point of his earthly existential sojourn, he utters these words. The thing which I greatly fear is come upon me. And that which I was afraid of is come unto me. It is apparent that this great man carried with him the fear of losing all he had. He feared that some great outside catastrophe would one day come into his life and rob him of everything that was near and dear to him. He said, the thing, that one thing which I greatly feared, has come upon me. It is though, it is though, it is as though he knew that this trouble was inevitable. He said, I feared it. And what I feared has come into my life. Now, before we go any farther, let's look at the word fear. In the Hebrew, there are two distinct definitions for fear. One meaning to revere or reverence, as in the fear of the Lord. The other meaning to startle, to unsettle, to alarm. In this passage, we're using the first definition. The writer uses the first definition. He says, rather, the second definition. He uses the second definition. He says, I am greatly alarmed. I am greatly troubled. I'm greatly unsettled because of what has happened in my life. Now in the context in which fear is used in the text, it implies that Job is speaking of an outside force, not an inside force, but an outside force that has come into his awesome domestic life. He is saying that my fear was that something that I could not control or prevent would come upon me. Literally meaning what I feared in the Hebrew means what I fear has arrived, it's come. In other words, it's like he expected it. He says, it's come, it's arrived. And he goes on to say that which I was afraid of has come unto me. What I was afraid of has come into me. You see, my friends, to be afraid implies that one is in a state of fear. The world, my friends, can be a frightening place. There are negative and yes, dynamic forces in this world that are alarming and unsettling. It is frightening when we observe how evil is being allowed to flourish. And we see our loved ones being drawn into the vortex of its seductive allure. To be frightened means to be shocked, startled, intimidated, or alarmed with sudden but short-lived fear. Yes, we are frightened. Sudden things come into our lives and they frighten us. But we are not afraid. Just because something has frightened us 
does not mean that we have resigned ourselves to live in a state of fear. We are not afraid. Although we're living in frightening times, I do believe that there is a cadre of people like you and me who know that we don't have to be afraid of the things that frighten us. We don't have to be in a state of uncontrollable fear just because something has happened and has frightened us. That fright is just for a moment. We are people of faith. We will not live in a state of fear. The psalmist encourages the congregation of the Lord in Psalm 91. This psalm the Hebrews ascribed to Moses. And it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, and Him will I trust. Surely he will deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence, nor for the pestilence, nor for the viruses that walks in darkness nor for the destruction that comes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come near you. There shall no evil be for thee, neither shall any plague come near thy house. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. You see? Job allowed the things that frightened him to be internalized in him and cause him to be afraid. No, my friends, these were things that should have just frightened him and he got over them. But he allowed fear to come in. He allowed a state of fear to control him. But thanks be to God, and thanks be to Jesus Christ, who is our Redeemer. Even when we succumb to fear, and fear takes over our lives, there is still a way to deliverance. Brother Job did not allow his condition to override his position he knew who he was and he knew whose he was he said I know that my redeemer liveth not your redeemer my redeemer liveth I know that the one who can bring me out of this thing lives and not only do I know that he lives I know that he will deliver me out of this for there is an appointed time and I'm going to wait for that time. I'm going to wait until my change comes. My friends, the COVID-19, the coronavirus, that pandemic is frightening. But I don't know about you, I'm not afraid. For the Lord is still my light and my salvation. If you have a neighbor with you, I want you to turn to that person and say, neighbor, there are some things that frighten me, but I'll never be afraid. For the Lord is my light and my salvation. There's an old gospel song that I heard the other day that says, For the God on the mountain is still God in the valley. When things go wrong, he'll make them right. And the God of the good times is still God in the bad times. The God of the day is still God in the night. My friends, the God who is my light is still my God in my night. Oh yes, 
I will admit that sometimes I get unsettled. But I believe in all my heart that my God, who is my God in the day, my God of my day is still my God in my night. And that no matter what I'm going through, my God will be with me. David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, you comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yes! I might get frightened, but I'll never be afraid. Yes, things might scare me, but they will never overtake me. I will not be in a state of fear because the God of the day is God in my night. And I will praise him and I will glorify him in the midst of what I'm going through because this is the day that the Lord has made I will rejoice and be glad in it Amen Father God let these words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O God, manifest yourself as Jehovah Jireh. The Lord supplies our need. Manifest yourself as Jehovah Rapha. The Lord that heals us. Right now, we walk by faith and not by sight. We believe you, O oh God, that every need will be supplied and that healing flow in the land. In Jesus' name.